Hi chess video fans, it's Camus here and this is uh, part two of my look at the mousetrap gambit. Now since I've done the first video, I've uh, done a lot more studying of this variation, done a lot of analysis uh, on my own, looked at Becker's analysis and uh, used Houdini to uh, ferret out the truth of a lot of lines. And I'm of the conclusion now that, that the mousetrap gambit may be the best way for white to combat Owen's defense. Uh, of course, you're probably going to put your opponent uh, on the back foot right away, unless he's familiar with the mousetrap gambit. Probably the best way for black to play, I would think, in this case, um, is to avoid taking the gambit pawn. And he can do this by, after the opening moves, e4, b6, d4. He can play e6 in this position, and this prevents bishop to g5 which is one of the hallmarks of the uh, mousetrap uh, system. So, um, of course, if he plays e6, and we just play normal lines against Owen's defense. And uh, I think sensible play by white, don't have to, don't have to know a lot of theory, um, should yield, if nothing else, a small advantage. So, uh, but let's uh, hope that he takes the piece of cheese on d5 after bishop to b7, bishop to g5. The point of this move is to uh, hamper Black's development and to weaken, further weaken the white squares. And as we mentioned in the first video, the weak white square is an important theme that white exploits in this variation. So let's assume that uh, Black has no fear and he takes the gambit pawn, d5. <clears throat> now, an important move for Black to play and nearly all variations of the mousetrap gambit is the move c6. But uh, Becker doesn't consider it best in this position. If you play c6, white has two possibilities. You can play c4, and this maintains the pawn at d5, which has a, a cramping effect on black's development. And uh, this is a perfectly reasonable way to play, but he also has the interesting possibility after c6 of d6, which is just given a mention by Becker, but I did some analysis with Houdini and it seems to be an interesting line. Uh, naturally, the pawn can't be taken because the uh, black will lose his queen. So say he plays knight to f6, knight to c3, bishop to g6, and Houdini already considers this a fully equal uh, compensation for the pawn. Bishop takes f6, and uh, of course he doesn't want to take, g takes f6, excuse me, he doesn't want to take um, the other way, e takes f6, because uh, queen to e2 will lead to uh, embarrassment for black, the loss of a piece in the game. So he has to play g takes f6, Bishop to d3, now he can take, knight to f3, queen to e7, knight to e2. Now, in this position, white is down two pawns, but Houdini actually likes white's position. So um, I guess this is based on the fact that black's king will have a hard time uh, finding safety. White's queen could end up being, excuse me, black's queen could end up being awkwardly placed on the e-file after uh, white castles and a rook comes to the e-file. And uh, the, his knight on b8 doesn't seem to have a sensible way to, development, to, to do, develop at the moment. So all in all, despite the two-pawn deficit, it seems like white is doing perfectly well here. So that's uh, after c6. So two... Uh, good possibilities, c4 and d6 are worth worth trying here. Now, the reason, we'll go back a move, after d5, instead of c6, uh, Becker actually recommends the move h6. In the previous video, we looked at f6, which led to some incredulity in the comments, because it just 
looks like an odd move. Looks like a beginner's uh, weakening move. However, I will say in most of the examples from Master Play, they have chosen f6, and furthermore, Houdini seems to believe it's the best move in the position. But let's look at uh, h6. And now, Becker says this is a good move because it forces white to make a decision now about his bishop. Whereas if he played some other moves like c6 or whatever, it might become clear where white should be putting that bishop. Obviously he has to do something about it since it's attacked. So by playing h6 now, this reduces white's options somewhat. Now white has two possibilities that spring to mind bishop to h4 and bishop to f4. Bishop to f4 has not yet been played, although Houdini considers it the best line. So in, event, in the event that uh, some refutation is found to these later lines that we'll look at, we can always come back to bishop to f4 and explore that particular avenue. Uh, I, I will say that at the moment that uh, there doesn't seem to be any problem with bishop to h4. So um, we're going to look at that. We're going to follow the stem game, Lut Ziabari, which was played in Seaburg in 2005. I think both these gentlemen are masters. I don't have the rating in front of me, but I know they're good players. So this is uh, we're not talking about uh, blitz play on the internet. Okay, so bishop to h4. Now, black has a number of possibilities here. In the game, he chose g5. So we'll look at that last. We'll look at F, knight to f6 first. It's a sensible move, sensible looking anyway. Knight to c3. Now the bishop has, is being hit, so bishop to g6. Oh, we'll just throw in here that if he decides to play d6 instead, this... Uh, this is a huge blunder because bishop takes f6, removes the defender, and black is going to lose a piece. So anyway, after knight c3, bishop to g6, knight to f3, c6, knight to e5, bishop to h5, g4, queen to c7, queen to e2, bishop to g6, bishop to g2, and uh, white has already got a one position here. Uh, we'll just look at an example. Um, in the actual game that this analysis comes from, I think he played knight takes d5, knight takes d5, c takes d5, bishop takes d5, e6, knight to g6, takes g6, f takes g6, queen to e4, king to f7, Bishop takes a8, and uh, black resigned. Uh, there's, I have some more analysis in this line, but I want to keep this, very, this uh, video relatively short and to the point. So just trust me that um, this variation doesn't seem to work well at all after uh, 5, knight to f6. So the other possibility is c6, which is uh, considered best by Becker. Now, Becker plays knight to c3, c takes d5. He's played this a number of times, apparently. f3, bishop takes, uh, excuse me, bishop to h7, knight to d5. And white, even Becker says white doesn't have enough comp compensation, not quite enough compensation, but Becker says he enjoys playing this position due to white's active pieces. So this is probably the best line that uh, Black can hope to achieve in all the uh, mousetrap variations that uh, we know of so far. However, um, I didn't think that it was quite enough, so I went back and we looked after c6. Instead of Becker's recommendation of knight to c3, um, looked at Houdini's recommendation of c4, and we get variations like this, g5, bishop to g3, bishop to take, uh, bishop to g7, knight to c3, bishop takes c3, b takes c3, knight to f6, h4, g4, 
bishop to e5. And Houdini considers that white has full compensation here. This uh, position is dynamically equal. So, uh, so I guess if we place uh, the move c4, Houdini's suggestion, then this is the best line that black can hope to achieve. And um, I certainly would rather play white than black in this position. Um, okay, so those are the fifth moves alternatives after bishop to h4. So let's go on to the game alternative, which was g after bishop to h4, excuse me, uh, g5. And Lut played, uh, Lut played g5, excuse me, Ziabari played g5. I'm all confused. Lut played knight to c3, hitting the bishop once more. Now, as in the first video, Black has a couple of uh, desperados here, but they don't seem to work out. In the game, uh, g6, bishop to g6 was played, but he could have tried bishop to take c2, queen takes c2, g takes h4, knight to f3, and in this position, white has an attacking plan. He can, um, excuse me, how do you do this? He can play for the plan knight to e5 to g6. And obviously, supposing black had done nothing and we got our knight to g6, pawn takes g6 is a checkmate after queen takes g6. So we have this uh, interesting idea. Um, the other possibility, after knight c3, the uh, desperado bishop takes g2, bishop takes g2, g takes h4, and <clears throat> look at uh, white's development versus black's development. White will easily develop all his pieces, get cancelled quickly, whereas uh, black has zero development unless you count the development of the two h-pawns. So certainly not a position, a dream position for black. So returning to the game, knight to c3 was played, and instead of the desperados, Ziabari chose bishop to g6. Bishop to g3, bishop to g7, knight to f3, and now black has some, uh, excuse me, uh, black has some uh, alternatives here at move eight. Let's look at uh, bishop to h5, bishop to e2, f5, h3, f4, bishop to h2, my phone is ringing, c6, queen to d3, and uh, white won this in 22 moves. Okay, so going back, uh, another eighth move alternative, knight to f6, queen to d2, knight to e5 is also possible, castles, uh, castles queenside. This is another game. c6, h4, knight to e5, bishop to f5, bishop to f4, king to h7, bishop to d3, bishop to g6, knight takes g6, f takes g, g6, h5, knight takes d5, h takes g6, king to g8, knight to d5, Knight takes d5, c takes d5, bishop takes h6, bishop to e5, g7, rook to f7, bishop takes, excuse me, bishop to h7 check, interesting sacrifice, and uh, this is uh, completely winning for white, according to Houdini, um, and we'll see, we'll just go through the end of the game quickly here, king takes h7, bishop to f4, King takes g7, bishop takes e5, rook to f6. If he has to play this, we know that things aren't good. Queen g5, king f7, rook h7, check. King e6, rook e1. It's, it's, it's really all over. Bishop takes f6, king to d7, queen takes d5, knight c6, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7. Rook takes e7, knight takes e7, queen to b7, check, king to d8. He 
could have taken the rook, but it's just faster to checkmate. Rook takes e7, a6, queen c7, checkmate. Okay, so actually, as in all of this game, I have a lot more analysis on all of these lines, but um, it's all good f for white. You know, just have to take my word for it rather than wade through a really long video. I'm just showing you some of the best lines here. Uh, I'm not overlooking any good lines for, for black, though. We're trying to be objective and showing black's best possibilities. Okay, so that was at move eight. Those are the eighth move possibilities for black after knight to f3. In the game, I chose d6. And this, uh, again, represents a another weakening of the white squares. So white swooped in with bishop b5, knight to d7. He could have played c6 here. c6 is not any better. D takes c6, bishop takes c3, bishop takes, excuse me, b takes c3, quates, queen to c7, and uh, Houdini feels that uh, white is doing better here as full compensation for the pawn, despite the, the triple, tripling of his pawns on the c file. Um, okay, so instead, after bishop b takes b5, excuse me, bishop to b5 check, uh, Ziabari played knight d7, and after knight d4, bishop takes d4, queen takes d4, hitting the rook in the corner, knight g, f6, castles queenside, white has full compensation, Houdini considers that white is actually um, close to winning here, a6, bishop to c6, rook to a7, Look at Black's position. He's just uh, being tied up in knots. His uh, knight on f6 is pinned. His rook on a7 doesn't look to be particularly well placed. His knight on d7 is pinned. And if he ever manages to castle kingside, then we have a built-in attack with h4 and a, a onslaught of the kingside position. So, anyway... White uh, to move, played h4, g4. It doesn't want to open the position anymore. h5, hitting that bishop. Bishop to f5 is forced, more or less. Queen to f4, hitting the bishop again. It's a poor bishop. e6, it's pretty desperate. Rook d to e1. Oh my god. King to f8, bishop to h4. And we're just pinning these knights all over the place here. King to g7, f3, knight to e5, d takes e6, f takes e6, rook to e5, exclam, d takes e5, queen takes e5. And the point of white's exchange sacrifice is now that now black can't uh, prevent a white rook from it invading on the seventh rank. Rook to f8 was played. And now rook to d1, queen to c8, rook to d7, check. Uh, black suddenly found that uh, he had to take this rook off to have any chance. Queen takes d7, bishop to d7, bishop takes d7, c5, bishop to c6, rook a to f7, f takes g4, bishop to g4, knight e4, hitting that knight, rook to d8, bishop takes f6, and black resigned. Let's uh, just see what uh, Houdini gives the position. I don't, don't think I looked at this final position with Houdini. Houdini says, <laughs> yeah, it's uh, 21... Uh, Okay, he gives the, we'll look at the Houdini continuation here. King to g8, bishop takes d8. Okay, so we don't really need to look any further here. It's, uh, it looks like mate in eight from this position. Okay, so we'll stop that. Oops, let's see if we can get back to our regular window. Um, let's just summarize here. So, look at the 
main line here, d5. And uh, remember, if uh, black plays c6, you can play c4 or d6 in this position. Instead, if he plays h6, which was the uh, theme of our uh, video, then after bishop h4, he should probably, black should probably play c6. And instead of Becker's suggestion of knight to c3, we should play c4 and maintaining the annoying pawn on d5 with something like this. And as I said, Houdini likes this position for white. So if this is the black, the best that black can expect to do, then it seems like the mousetrap gambit is in pretty good shape. I hope you enjoyed this and got something out of it. Please leave any uh, comments, questions, criticisms, money gifts in the comments thread. Uh, and uh, perhaps there'll be a part three. I came across a game from Brazil where black played um, neither h6 nor f6. So perhaps if anybody's interested, I'll do a third Mousetrap Gambit video showing how that game turned out. All right. Thank you very much.